Hey guys, it's here bringing you another video. Now, welcome um, to a QA. and a So apologies that we're doing another one of these. Uh, getting content at the moment, I've probably said it in commentaries recently. It's a bit rough. Uh, the end of season, generally league, is always a bit rough. Um, so going a bit more casual for the week of the end of the season. And when obviously preseason comes, we'll be doing a bunch of new content, fresh content with the, the new Summoner's Rift. And we'll be doing a, a um, Smurf series, which is going to be really fun. Um, a fresh Rush to Diamond series on the account that we just leveled to 30. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Um, feel free in the comments. To, I am taking suggestions uh, for champions. Um, but I will say um, the first question that we're going to be answer in today's video is also linked with Acutie as a partner of the channel. It's a website that we've done many things with before. It'll be linked in the description. And that is what am I looking forward to in Season 10? Um, so go in the, com go in the description click on the QT link and please go tell me what yours is on the QT itself if you want a chance to win uh, we're going to be giving away actually quite a lot here we're going to be giving away two akali upcoming codes um for both eu and na also we're going to be giving away one darius code per region eu or na um so three league partner chromas in total do remind everybody um, that I haven't got the Akali codes yet. They will come in a couple of weeks, but I've already got the Darius codes and they're going to be expiring in about a week or so from me uploading this video. So the Darius winner, one for each server, will be chosen before the Akali winners. If you're watching this video within a week of it coming out, you can still enter for Darius. If you're watching this video three weeks later, you can still enter for Akali. Um, so go do that, <clears throat> enter up. Let me know what you're looking forward to in season 10. What am I personally looking forward to? If I'm honest, like a kind of hopefully like a little bit of a reset from season nine. Um, I am hoping that Riot's going to fix a couple of things in the background, whether they be public about it or not. I don't need them to be. It's just the feel of the game, you know, maybe when the placements are back, hopefully that doesn't come with completely broken MMR. Again, for those that weren't around or you didn't play ranked, there were legitimately people who were, let's say, gold one or platinum four equivalent last season in season eight. And they had negative win rates, 40, 45% win rates. But because the MMR was that broken, that you just gained a lot of rating for some reason, even if you lost or whatever, like not gaining when you lost, but you gained a lot when you won and you didn't lose much when you lost. They were climbing, these type of players, gold one players last season, climbing with 40, 45% win rates and making it to master at the beginning of season nine. And that's affected the whole season. Like the, the integrity of the season is just been a bit fiestery, I think, because of that. So many people climbed to where they shouldn't have. And then, yeah, Riot didn't really do a whole lot about it. If you remember, they actually demoted everybody in Diamond manually one division. Um, didn't really do a whole lot because it didn't get rid of those people. But um, it's been a bit of a weird season. So I'm hoping Season 10 will bring a bit of a reset. Hope you Riot will do a couple things in the background making sure that doesn't happen again um and you know the new summoner's rift i'm also very much looking forward to played the game a long time and i'm always looking forward to when there are bigger sh map changes um that don't change like I i'm not a massive fan if i'm honest of system changes um you know the idea of roll ranked or dynamic queue i don't think nothing like not big things need to change for the systems in place of league i think they work pretty well but the map and things like that that adds gameplay, I, I think that's a good thing. Um, so I am looking forward to the map changes. Hopefully also the ranked integrity will go up again. Because um, from memory, if you've been around a long time in League, Season 6 was notoriously a terrible season because of Dynamic Q. Season 7 was a little be better. Season 8 was a little better. But then unfortunately they made another big mistake in Season 9. So hopefully Season 10 they'll kind of bring it back around and it'll kind of be like Season 7 and 8 that it was getting better again. It's just a shame that they let Season 9 happen, which was... I, I don't even know how they they did that. Like, within, like, a couple days, they should have fixed that. They, they left it for, like, a month. So I don't really know how that was possible, but Riot do some very weird things. Uh, you know, they... they, they um, I do love Riot as a company, you know, but uh, they do odd things every now and then. Next up, though, again, so remember that question. What are you looking forward to in Season um 10 go answer that question on the qt to enter yourself for a chance to win a bunch of different chromas next up is uh are there any champs that i think need a rework right now um so 
uh, maybe a couple, but just to announce, like, if you guys don't know officially what are the champions that are getting reworked and what they've announced. Obviously, we've got the upcoming Volibear and Fiddlesticks. They are what we call full reworks. Um, so they're, 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 their potential, the whole kit is changing. The look of the champion could be changing. It's going to be kind of similar, like the Pantheon one, but, you know, it's it's new, right? They have recently announced a couple other ones, but they are mini reworks. So they might be just changing a couple abilities, maybe updating their graphics a little bit, but the core of the champion is very much the same. And that is um, Shivana is one of them. Wukong is one of them. And today, yesterday of me recording this video, they announced Diana is one of them too. Um, with Diana, it's actually kind of interesting because of all the champions that they have announced, she's really the only one that I'm interested in and I play. They are changing, from what I can tell, they're swapping two abilities around. They are changing the ultimate and the W. So the W will be the dash, I think, and the ultimate will be the shield. And obviously there might be a couple balance changes to that, that maybe the ultimate, you know, the dash might now not do any damage or something. Um, but yeah, like that seems very interesting to me. That means, you know, Diana has a lot more utility at level 3, doesn't have to wait till level 6. But that should be... You know, that is something that I'm interested in keeping my eye on because I do play Diana. She's kind of one of my comfort picks. So I will see about that. Next up is uh, what do I think about the new expeditions in Legends of Rune Terror? So by the time this video comes out, it, it should be fine because this video is coming out after um, the uh, embargo is lifted. So if you haven't watched my Legends of Rune Terror video, I would have made one. It would have already been out now. Uh, I got early access to the game mode. So, you know, not just one of the beta patches. Riot actually gave me early access on Tuesday when it's becoming public to people that have got access on Thursday. So that was really cool. And the actual mode, I, I think it's pretty nice. Um, it's not going to be the main mode that I play. Uh, I will do probably the three weekly attempts, though, uh, as long as I can afford it with the shards. Um, but yeah, no, it is something that I will do, most definitely. Uh, it, again, for those that don't know what it is, it's an arena mode equivalent. So you go into the game mode, you draft a deck, and you do as best as you can. I will definitely play that. Um, but my main one is going to be the standard mode ranked. That is that is what, my, what I want to do. But I will play it every now and then. Um, just to get the weeklies done, all the quests and all that good stuff. So I like it. Um, they do change a few things from, like, let's say, Hearthstone's arena mode, and I overall like the changes, but obviously I'm not a massive online card player, so someone that is, like, a, an amazing Hearthstone player, they might have different opinions to what I do, and that's fine. Um, I definitely think Legends of Rune Terror is more open to newer players in how they do things, uh, but it, it, it in no means it dumbs down the experience for hardcore players either, so I think they've got a nice balance there. Uh, <coughs> sorry dry mouth if you are interested in that and you haven't watched my video please go do so it uh, would have been up on the channel either yesterday or the day before but yeah thank you next up is do i watch scara the answer is yes um so i don't really watch many league channels but i watch scara for tft um i am needing to get better at tft because in the next couple weeks i am in a tournament um i guess i can kind of announce it here so you know Pencil in your diaries if you want to watch me live. I think it's on, weirdly, I think it's on a Monday. It might be Monday the 25th of November. I'm in a TFT tournament, uh, in a Twitch Rivals tournament, um, which obviously is a great honor to always be invited to Twitch Rivals. Weirdly, I know it sounds odd because there are technically bigger UK streamers than me. I am being used for a lot of stuff when it comes to Twitch and Riot. And I think it's because of my... Uh, image in a way you know i'm sure we all can think of a certain uk streamer that is bigger than me he will not get selected for anything because he's crazy um without us being a bit you know whatever's you, you, a company is never going to work with someone like that so i'm safe uh which you know that's not a bad thing that's a good thing which is awesome so i am going to be playing in the tournament i have been playing a bit of tft um and yeah i I'm, i watch scara to basically learn tft he is my guy that i watch some people may instantly, oh, what about Toast? Because I know he's also big into it. I find that dude a little bit too weird for me personally, so I don't really watch him. 
But if you like him, that's fine. Again, I'm never elitist, really, to who people watch as long as they have a positive influence on the community. So Toast, he's weird, but I'm sure, he, you know, he's great. So uh, that's fine. Uh, there are some content creators that I do question well, how do they have an audience in the first place, but that's a whole different topic. Next up is... What do I think about Senna, strong or weak? I think she's overall strong if you know what you're doing on her, but I, have, I think she's going to be one of those champions that fits in the same category as Bard, for example, in support. The difference between a good and a bad Bard player is astronomically huge. I think it's going to be the same with Senna. The difference between a good and a bad Senna is going to be massively different. Um, and I think that's fine. She's like weirdly easy to play, but really hard to pull off. So I don't see her being great in low rating. So I'd see her as a high rating pick, but I'm happy with that because it, recently a lot of the picks that Riot, the recently a lot of the things they Riot have been doing have been pretty basic. Um, I like the fact that they do still release things kind of specifically for high rating every now and then. Um, so yeah. Next up is um. Favorite esports player other than Doublelift. So yeah, Doublelift is my favorite esports player. Who's my second? They are asking because they already knew my favorite. It depends if the question is current players or ex players. My my favorite player of all time is Dyrus. Um, literally my favorite player of all time. You know, and it's been very weird for the past couple of years that I, he follows me on Twitter. We've had some conversations. That's a weird feeling. Same now with Wicked. Uh, me and Wicked weirdly. Are becoming kind of friends or friendly um that dude i looked up to you know dyrus and wicked you know you you're getting a theme here top laners um with a kind of by themselves play style like the team doesn't focus helping wicked the team doesn't focus helping dyrus that's what i did back in absolute zero when i was top lane we didn't help me in top um so yeah like i i do like dyrus and wicked and both of them i have had many a conversation with now it's a very surreal experience, that I will tell you. Um, but yeah, pr probably those two, uh, Darius and Wicked. If, again, if, if your question though is of current players, I don't know if I have one apart from double... Oh, Aphromu. There you go. Aphromu. Boom. All old school people, really. How many champions do I think should be in an optimal champion pool to climb? Um, minimum two roles. Ideally, you play three because of autofill. Uh, minimum two champions per role, and I actually mean all five, not just your three that you're playing, because autofill, like if you're a, a mid top jungle player, but you get autofilled support, your excuse can't be, oh, I don't play support, then you're not prepared for ranked. Uh, you have to have something in every single role if you want to be a decent ranked player, at least in my eyes. Um, so two, two champions, all five roles. And then for your main three or two roles, I'd say minimum five, and they should be constantly moving with the meta. And again, this is my opinion. Like, there are going to be people going, oh, I've played the same thing for five years. Yeah, I'm. my advice isn't for you, if that's the case. My advice is for the average player that they move with the meta. And I'd say roughly five champions in a role that you're playing actively is quite healthy, and that they, those champions should move around and change depending what is strong or weak. They, they drop something that's weak. Uh, if you are that type of player that's, you know, not, you know, connected to just a couple champs. Um, it's your champion pool should be fluid um, rather than stationary. All right, next up is uh, with the potential meta shift tanks, what carries and supports junglers would be good at enabling a win condition against a tanky team comp uh, that is not just tanks versus tanks at the end of a fight um so yeah if the if the tank meta is coming back what's good basically um well your tank killing ad carries the ones that are of great synergy with bork are all obviously a good idea vein obviously might make a comeback lucian's not too bad varus isn't terrible anything with percentage health damage or that can use bork really um the likes of something like well, mobile is not bad, like mobile AD carries, because tanks obviously can lock things down pretty well, usually. Support-wise, well, you either go damage support with percentage or true damage, so a Velkos or a Brand. Velkos got true damage, Brand has got percentage da damage, um, or you go a tank support in tank meta. And then for junglers, 
really it's the the thing about jungling is jungling is going to be even more important next season than than this season and already jungle is the most important role so dragons are going to be the highest priority thing in the game and your early game to secure those dragons is going to be incredibly important so like things like Carthus jungle will just not be a thing anymore doesn't have the pressure needed things like Lee Sin and early game aggro junglers they're going to reign supreme whether they're a tank or not they don't have to be but early game pressure junglers are going to be very powerful and most likely the meta will continue being jungle camps bot bot lane and jungler then takes dragon uh, that most likely won't change. And then the top lane meta <clears throat> will probably be whichever is the best 1v1 duelist. Because with all the, the aggro probably going back to bot lane for the dragons, whichever top laner is best in the 1v1 will, will win the lane. Because there will be no jungle pressure in top lane because the jungles are bot lane to try and get the dragons. So, yeah. It's, it's hard to say specific champions, but generally. Uh, am I going to be building a brand new WoW guild for the new WoW expansion? Uh, probably not. I doubt. Um, I'm kind of done being a guild leader or officer to a World of Warcraft guild. I did it for a very long time. We've tried to do it every now and then for the past couple of years. And it boils down to free time. Now, when I, you know, I will be playing the new World of Warcraft expansion, but I don't know to what capacity... Am I going to raid? Am I not? The reason why I don't really know, and if I'm actually honest with myself, I don't think I'm going to raid, or at least definitely not hardcore. If I join a raiding guild, it'll be one or two nights maximum a week. Um, is because World of Warcraft, if you've never played it, but if you have, you'll definitely most likely agree with me, it's a sucking game. Not, not a sucky game, a sucking game. A life-sucking game. That it's wonderful, it's a brilliant game to play, it's brilliant if you've got nothing going on in your life, which, you know, has definitely been me in the past. It, you, you always have something to do in that game, you know, level an alt, spam dungeons, do mythic timed dungeons, raids. It's brilliant if you've got nothing going on, but if you have a life, or you're trying to have a life... It's very hard to keep up with other people because for the pe the people, like, it, it sounds really bad, but the people that put a lot into WoW, they get really far ahead and the people that are trying to do other things get left behind. So WoW is that weird game that it's kind of your split into you either pretty much a hardcore or you're casual. It's hard. There, there's not really an in-between. And I, oddly, am trying to have more of a life recently. I'm trying to do more things, organize, going out more, getting in back in shape you know health i'm down right now by the way health update down 32 pounds in two months um feel free to google it if you know you use a different weight system if you're from britain that is uh, two stone and two pounds i've lost in uh, two months um so it's going very well it's me i am trying to have more of a life um i do have certain things i also want to do in 2020 and i just don't know if wow is going to be a good fit with those things um so we'll see pretty much maybe uh but it's definitely not going to be making my own wow guild um maybe i'll join one of your guild if, if one of you has a wow guild um or you're part of a wow guild that raids let me know closer to the expansion don't let me know now um uh, maybe i'll do a tweet i'll be like hey i'm looking for a wow guild does anybody have one I, i'm look. you know i might raid once or twice a week and um maybe i'll join one of you guys next up is do I think competitive TFT will become a thing? I mean, it kind of is. There are tournaments for it. Um, obviously, there's just not an LCS league. Uh, but there, there are... Again, I'm in a tournament in, in a couple of weeks for it. Um, which obviously is going to be, you know... I don't know how much prize money is on the line. But it'll be... Obviously, it'll, there'll be thousands up for grabs. Uh, like there always is in Twitch Rivals. Um, I don't know. It depends how much what Riot wants to do. Again, I, I've said before... We're speaking to devs at League 10, at the London event at League 10. Riot did not expect TFT to do well, like as well as it's done. Uh, they expected it to be okay. You know, they kind of made it in a couple months. They rushed making it. It wasn't even ready when it got released because they were reacting to the auto battler thing. Um, and they got in at the right time. It was fairly polished compared to everything else. And it took over, B became the biggest auto battler game. 35 million plays in one month. Uh, that is way bigger than anything else in the auto battler uh, community and way more than Riot expected. So, and when speaking to them, they want Legends of Runeterra, the card game, 
They want that to be their next big hit. Tech, not really TFT. TFT really overachieved comparing to what they expected. So they might have not prepared a competitive scene for TFT, where I do think they're going to be doing competitive stuff for Legends of Runeterra. So I don't know. It, it kind of depends. All right, next up is... How relevant do I think top lane will become? And what do I think will be top lane meta? I, we mentioned it briefly earlier. Top lane is going to be mainly, potentially even more of an island in Season 10 than it currently is. You still get a bit of jungle pressure at the moment. You might get none in the new season because of dragons. Um, so that means it's going to be even more isolated. That means duelists, 1v1 powerful duelists, split pushers basically, um, will reign supreme. So, like, obviously Jax is getting a big nerf because Spear of Shojin's going away, but he'll still be strong as Jax. Jax, Aurelia, Fiora, hell, even probably Trindamir, stuff like that is going to be really good. Whether we see tanks in top lane or not, I'm not 100%. Um, because, you know, tanks sometimes can be used as a counter to some of the duelists. Like, you know, if you put a tank against Fiora, sure, she can out-farm, she can out-do whatever, but it's very hard to kill uh, a tank as a Fiora, usually. Unless, you know, it makes a, a mistake or something like that. Um, but yeah, one of you on duelists um, and stuff like that. It, I have had a couple questions. I, I don't have it here, but I may as well answer it. What is my plan to play in Season 10? I, I will say, I, I, might, I might have mentioned it in a video, but I don't know if it made it on the channel, because today, today was a very bad recording day. I played, like, I don't know, five or six games and maybe got one video, maybe two. So I don't know what I said that actually made it to an actual video. My plan for Season 10, I'm going to see how much the dragons affect the meta. And if it is the case that it's like, oh my god, dragons are everything, I'm probably going to main jungle and AD carry. Like, those are the two roles that affect the game the most. And I'll just move to those roles. Like, I know some people think it's funny that I say it, but I wouldn't just say it if I didn't mean it. I am comfortable to play every role, every champion practically in Diamond. Uh, I think, you know, given the the drive to do it and the time to do it i do believe i'm like i could climb to diamond high diamond with any role um there obviously are some that i don't want to play like support and stuff like that and also yeah every champion has play that champion no like some champions i don't want to play but i am comfortable like if i main ad carry yeah i think i can be a diamond one ad carry main if i main jungle i've already been a diamond one jungle main but i think i could do it again like i i don't think that's really an issue like i i am comfortable just to play whatever um and, I, you know, I think we've shown that for the past few years. But, yeah, I'll just I'll just go to whatever's strong. So, next season, we might not be a mid-top lane channel. We might be a jungle AD carry channel. Um, but also, you know, as a YouTuber, you've got to look at the views. If a lot of my audience is here to watch mid and top lane, and then, you know, watching AD carry doesn't interest them, yeah, I've got to pay attention to that a little bit. Um, that's why I've always said being a YouTuber doesn't actually help you climb. Because, you know, for my channel... That's not a one-trick channel. You know, I can't play Renekton in every single game, for example, um, because people will get bored. My channel is all about diversity, so I've got to play something different every single game, which actually really hurts your climb. Yes, never be a one-trick. I, I would never be, but I would probably, if I wasn't a YouTuber, I'd play three Zoe games in a row, three Diana games in a row, and that gives you good consistency. I don't do that because of YouTube, so yeah. Uh, next question that I actually just got randomly in a Discord DM how was Pokemon? I saw you uh, post about it on Instagram. Um, so yeah, we went to the Pokemon Center in London. Um, and I also got to announce something that we said on the stream earlier today. Um, Pokemon Sword Shield is coming out. I know there's controversy behind it. If I'm honest, I literally don't care about the controversy. I'm going to have a nice time playing a Pokemon game. It's nostalgic for me. It's relaxing for me. I do have an Elgato capture card set up. It does work with a Switch. Um, we're going to be doing, potentially, we'll see how it goes... Um, we are going to be doing some streams for Pokemon. Uh, not many, maybe just one a month, but the stream is specifically going to be battles. So you guys can challenge me to battles on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, we won't do the first one, probably for until a few weeks into the actual game to give people time, obviously, to get their team going. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd announce that too, um, that you guys can come join the stream. And obviously I will Discord that, tweet that, so make sure you follow me on both or join my Discord server. Um... But yeah, like we will be doing that, which would be good. Um, the Pokemon Center was great. 
we did again if you want the full like me chatting about it i did do a video on my second channel huzzy extra talking about it because people really requested me talking about it um because everyone's heard it's crazy you know you queue for a crazy long time there are rare items obviously to get and uh yeah we we, we queued it was me and vixie um we queued for six hours together it was long. She actually got very, very dizzy and kind of ill at one point. So she had to dip out of the queue, but she, she was okay. Just lack of sleep and food, I think. Um, also, just to clear something up, because I, I I shouldn't have to, but I guess I do. Me and Vixie are just good friends. The end. A male and female can just be good friends. Nothing more needs to happen, and there's nothing bad because it doesn't. Good friends are good friends. Um, and... Yeah, like that's all I got to say about that. But it's just been a thing recently that people think there's more going on. Nope, her boyfriend Ryan. And by the way, because people go, oh, if he wasn't there, nope. I would. Vixie is legit just a friend, and her boyfriend Ryan is a great dude. And me and him get along really well too. He's very similar to me in some aspects, and we like a lot of the same things. So I just wanted to clear that up. I shouldn't have to, but people assume things. I, I would presume younger people assume because they think that opposite genders can't be just friends, but. Anyway, moving forward, uh, you can see up here the exclusive Pikachu. That is Pikachu London. I have a Charizard out of camera shot up there. Um, I've got the Pokemon London Chili Bottle. I've got... That fell over. Oops. I've got the Pokemon Playmat. I've got the Pokemon Detective Pikachu hat up there. Uh, I've got the Pokemon T-shirt. <laughs> Um, so you'll notice I got more items than you were technically allowed. So Vixie actually didn't buy many items. So we did put some of my items in her basket and then I paid her back. But I have also bought a couple things on eBay. So I do admit that. Uh, even though I went to the Pokemon Center, again, you're limited to how much you could buy. So I couldn't get the play mat because I already had five items. So I did buy this on eBay. Uh, it is legitimate and everything, and also the um, legitimate chili bowl. These are the two things that I bought on eBay. Everything else I got at the Pokemon Center. But it was a good day. It was, it was a great day. Again, that's part of what I've said about I'm doing more things, going out more. Um, after that, we went for really good food. If you're in London, go to a Japanese place called Ippido. There's three of them in London. 100% would recommend. Um, also, just to quickly plug, please follow my Instagram if you want to get updates about me, whatever I'm doing. Again, I'm planning on doing more things. I am going where, somewhere pretty cool in the next few weeks. I'm going back to the uh, Harry Potter studio tour. Um, and I will be taking a bunch of pictures for my Instagram for that. It should be all Christmassy and really cool. Uh, also, my new car is about a week away and I will be obviously taking pictures. I will be doing a video of the new car on the second channel. I'm not going to be doing it on the main channel because it's not League of Legends or gaming based. Second channel, YouTube channel, but obviously also on the Instagram. Both, well, my Instagram is Huzzy Games. The second channel is Huzzy Extra here on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that, that should be all good. And um, yeah, obviously, again, thanks everybody for supporting what I do. A YouTube at the moment is going through a bit of a weird phase. Like everything for my channel is so far okay. Um, but we recently, as YouTubers, have to tell YouTube what our content is for. Is our content specifically for kids or not? Obviously, mine is not. Even though a kid can watch it and it's fine, I don't make content for kids. So I had to say no. And I don't know if that is going to negative, negatively impact me as a YouTuber. I don't know if I'm going to get worse ads because they keep the best ads for kids. I have no idea. So as long as you guys keep supporting what I do, thank you very much. Um, also, make sure you follow the, the, the stream um the stream has been going really well we're trying to reinvest a lot of stuff into the stream we've got new sub badges new emotes and everything that i think look really good um so yeah feel free to come watch me live um it's a bit of a different vibe than obviously the youtube channel but it's really nice we've got a good community i feel and yeah things are going really well again i'm really happy with the weight loss we've lost majority of what i need to lose um keep i'm still going though i'm still on the diet that's not stopping anytime soon um but by the time 2020 is around, I would have actually pretty much lost most of the weight I need to. And then 2020 is all about fitness rather than mo mainly weight loss. The past five, five years, I've failed to lose weight. We're finally doing it, everybody. Like we, We've lost majority of what I need to lose. Like How crazy is that? Um, we've lost 32 pounds in two months. I've probably got another eight to 10 pounds to go to be pretty happy. Uh, and then, yeah, just get fit. Uh, I am in a pretty good state fitness yesterday i did pb on squat again 
but everything's going pretty good. And I will say one of the amazing things that makes me happy at the moment, apart from my other things, which, you know, generally life is good at the moment, apart from League of Legends, if I'm honest, um, hearing the messages of when I'm talking about fitness of how some of you have got back into fitness because I'm talking about fitness. I know some people are getting a bit bummed out about it. You know, I used to be that person that was really overweight. And whenever someone said, oh, you should get in shape, I was always that guy like, oh, stop talking about it. If that's you, I do sympathize, but I would recommend it. Just start slow, uh, build your way up. You know, trust me, I wake up now, my body feels a lot better than it used to. You know, when you're overweight, your body randomly aches and does weird things or hurts a bit more or you can't get comfortable. It's a lot nicer to be a, a lot more slim. Um, you know, I, I've also trouser wise gone down basically three trouser sizes in two months. Uh, shirt size, I'm now an, a, a large shirt instead of XL. Um, and that's mainly my shoulders. My stomach at the moment could probably fit in a medium, but my shoulders have also have always been a bit decent. Um, so yeah, no, things I would recommend losing weight. Um, it definitely does make you happier. Um, do we have a final... Oh, someone saying, would my, would I ever consider going pro in League of Legends? The answer is definitely no. Um, one, I'm not good enough. And I know that. But when I maybe was good enough, you know, back in Season 3, if I really pushed it, I might have been able to do it back then. And then obviously continue to improve in the pro scene. The money wasn't great, if I'm honest, in Season 3. Uh, money obviously now is crazy. So yeah, monetarily would have been a great idea to go pro. Is a good idea to go pro. I'm not good enough to do that, so there's no point dreaming of it. But, you know, if you guys have heard the rumor contract with Huni, Huni or Huhi, one of them, uh, for Team Dignitas. So not a great org, like, in terms of being in the top. The dude is going to get paid over $2 million for a two-year contract. A million dollars a year. And he's not some, like, amazing superstar. I know he's potentially won Worlds once, but that was a few years ago. A oh, million dollars a year for playing League. Obviously, monetarily, that's amazing. But back when I could have potentially pushed it, yeah, like, there are some organizations that, you know, Riot provides a basic salary to all players, and it's like 25,000 euros, I think. That's basically what you would have earned in Season 3. I'm going to be honest with everybody. I earned more than that in Season 3, probably on YouTube. I earn a lot more than that now. So there's no point even looking to do it, because one, well, there was no point then, and there's no point now, because I'm not good enough. So, yeah. I, I'd potentially, the only thing that I would consider in pro League of Legends of what I potentially would ever want to get into. Two things, actually. One is casting, like actually casting tournaments. A goal of mine in 2020 is actually to cast a professional tournament. Um, I have been offered them in the past, but I've turned them down. And if I'm honest, I mainly got, I turned them down because of my own self-esteem. Um, going to a studio, being in a suit, being in front of a camera to an audience that doesn't know me. I could have just thought of the Twitch chat and be like, oh God. But now that I'm being more confident in myself, like I am probably going to accept some of those offers in 2020. Um, but the casting is one thing that I'd potentially want to do. Um, and also coaching, um, you know, being a team coach is something that I'd also consider or an analyst or something like that. Um, but not really a player. But yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this Q&A. If you did, throw a like on the video. Remember, the QT that is linked to this video will be in the description. Go on the QT. Uh, leave what you are looking forward to in Season 10 in that QT discussion to get yourself entered to win some of the League Partner Chromas. Anyway, that's going to be it. Like it, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time.